there are enough properties that are waiting to uh, be uh, waken up. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard. And in this episode, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Alan and Liliana Malin of K Architecture and Design, both deeply rooted in Switzerland and Provence. Their philosophy is grounded in the belief that architecture should be a reflection of its surroundings, a harmonious dialogue between the natural world and modern living. Alan and Liliana champion the idea that while innovation is key, it should never overshadow the timeless elements of function, comfort and connection to nature. Their approach to design is both thoughtful and meticulous. Every project begins with an intimate understanding of the client's needs, but it is Alan's and Liliana's flair for offering innovative solutions whether through the careful selection of materials or the seamless integration of technology that truly sets them apart. They artfully blend modern elements within organic textures, creating spaces that feel both contemporary and deeply rooted in their environment. Their work is a celebration of heritage, enriched with authentic pieces and the craftsmanship of artisans and artists who help transform spaces into living, breathing works of art. And from their Swiss base, They've contributed to some of the most significant contemporary architecture projects, paying homage to modernism while their agency in Provence specializes in creating luxurious retreats that honor the beauty of their natural surroundings. I was very excited to be speaking with both Alan and Liliana. Um, they are running a very innovative design studio and architecture practice, one where they have pretty much become client free. And the majority of projects that they do in their offices are ones which are self-led design focused development. So in Provence, for example, we had a, a, the great privilege of being able to visit a number of their developments and their projects. They're finding extraordinary heritage buildings and transforming them into either luxurious retreats like the Master Chabran, which is where this podcast is done, or they're turning them into uh, small boutique hotels or rentals uh, for the area. But it's a really you know, amazing kind of portfolio of work and they are very much executing on the client-free practice that so many architects strive for. So sit back, relax and enjoy Alan and Liliana Malin. And now a word from today's sponsor. A while ago, I began to hear reports of a company that was helping some of our clients build remote teams. We looked into it more closely and discovered the company World Teams that was helping small architectural practitioners build remote teams that were both capable and qualified. I was intrigued by another business that's addressing one of the critical pain points for small architectural practices, which is the ability to grow and shrink a team effectively, to be able to handle higher workflow without having to staff up significantly and also being very sensitive about labor costs. World Teams is built to address these issues. World Teams is a small but mighty company that helps architectural practices build high-performing remote teams quickly and efficiently, saving you the headache of sorting resumes and interviewing underqualified candidates. World Teams operates in your time zone and prioritizes near-native English speakers, ensuring clear and efficient communication with your remote team members. They have flexible contracts so you can adjust your team size as your needs evolve. Additionally, you're connected directly with your skilled professionals, which fosters trust and collaboration. And World Teams helps you reduce your operating costs without compromising the quality that is so important to a practice. To download a free guide for building a remote team for a small architectural practice, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash world teams. That's one word, businessofarchitecture.com forward slash world teams. As a reminder, sponsorship is not an endorsement and you must do your own due diligence before entering into any business relationship. Go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash world teams. It's time to announce this month's 200, 300 and 400 club. If you've missed our episode on the 200 club, listen to Business of Architecture episode 485 to learn more about this new initiative for benchmarking small firm performance. So big congratulations to our 200 club members who are Yogesh Mystery, uh, Lena Boella, Brad Hubble, Marina Rubina, Joost Bende and Denise Burkett, Andrea Nemechek, Kelly Morgan, Julian Larry Apel, George Aguirres, Jorge Catran and David and Kristen Ware. Our 300 club members are Mark Elster, Irini Adams, 
Daniela Espana and Newell Ranasing, Christopher Brandon, Charles Scram, and our 400 club members are Drew and Justine Tyndall and Kimberly Dokes. Keep up the amazing work, guys. And then, Liliana, welcome to the Business of Architecture. What a pleasure to have you on the show, and thank you so much for uh, having us here at uh, Master Shabrat. So, very excited to be speaking with both of you. Obviously, we came here because we were looking at the space for an event, and there's an interesting story because I actually came across the space um, a few, a little, maybe a couple of years ago. Okay. And I was looking. I was on doing a lot of Zoom meetings, mm-hmm. and I was looking at kind of beautiful backgrounds to have in my Zoom meeting. And I actually chose the background, an image of that. Really? And and it was quite it was quite funny because then then um, last year we were starting to look at venues for um, to have our our and our, our marriage yeah, yeah. Uh, ceremony, yeah. and Avon picked up the image and was like. I was like Place. That was, that's the thing. And, and even more excited to hear that actually it was, I mean, I could tell that there was an architectural, in, like heavy interior design influence on the space, but delighted to hear that actually it was an architectural design studio that had developed, bought the, pro- bought the property and turned it into its own business. Yeah. And that, that was really courageous, which is exactly what we talk about here on the Business of Architecture show. So welcome, um, really, really great to be speaking with you. And perhaps we could just start by talking about K-Interiors a little bit and how that business started, how long ago you guys founded it, and then we can kind of move into the, your property exploits. My pleasure. K-Interiors is actually the um, baby of K-Architect. Right. Uh, okay, I bet it's in uh, Geneva. It was founded uh, by uh, my husband, Dylan Mailer, um, a few years ago. About Many years ago. About, about, year, about 30. <laughs> and, um, uh, and now counts, uh, nowadays counts more than 35 uh, collaborators. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the biggest uh, architectural studios in uh, engineering, Switzerland. And uh, key interiors came... Uh, uh, as a natural continuity of uh, architecture mm-hmm. into interior design, because both uh, parts are connected yeah. uh, forever, <laughs> even though a lot of uh, architects uh, um, uh, have difficulties accepting the uh, interior <laughs> designers. <laughs> uh, but um, we have, uh, or Alan has, uh, uh, observed it uh, during many years, and uh, and it was in very high end project. It's uh, crucial to to complete uh, um, a project and a client's desire. Mm-hmm. It's all that. Yeah. So this is how uh, KNTV started when uh, when we met. Actually. Ah, I see. Okay. So so the architecture firm was was first, and then in the key and bought. Ten years ago, we went ten years ago. Yes. We created a uh, key interior yeah. for the uh, interior design. And since uh, five years, we move uh, to the south of France. And my son is in charge of the um, key architect in Geneva. And we decided to, to open um, a new uh, office uh, in the south of France. Ah, so we have architecture and interiors. <laughs> So, so yeah, that, the, the new the new studio is still connected with the studio in, in Geneva, or it's a completely new entity. Or it is connected. Uh, uh, we do have together also a few few projects in uh, around Geneva in Meuse, mm-hmm. for example. Uh, we had together uh, a big project in uh, Central Bay. It uh, it happens that uh, that we uh, work together. It, it began yeah. yes, it depends very much on the project. Um, what we both do here is uh, uh, now uh, by uh, abandoned old or uh, ugly properties <laughs> and try to to give them uh, new life um, and um, yes and and uh, have them. Either prepared for clients or yeah. uh, ready to to be uh, uh, worked on as a, a rental homes with uh, high end uh, services. Got it. 
So the, the the portfolio of work that you had in the architecture and interior design studio, you've done a lot of um, you know, very high end luxury housing, and you can obviously see that here with you know the, the attention to detail to absolutely everything. Thank you. Yeah. It's absolutely really really beautiful. Um, uh, so how and why did you decide to kind of move into doing your own properties? I mean, this is something that lots of architects and designers want to do, but it's it's difficult. It's not easy. We uh, wanted to do a weekend and a holiday uh, project just by ourselves because uh, architecture is our passion. So mm -hmm. uh, um, we cannot say uh, work stops after 5 p.m. and bed life begins. It's uh, part of our life. Architecture is what we uh, love. And um, we had a summer house already in here. We were uh, spending around our weekends and, uh, and holidays here. And then we one day we decided to look for an old house and, uh, and have our own project because we were all, all the time working on uh, on different uh, yeah, different class, different projects in the same office, but not, uh, not together. And then we found, uh, but the Bastille de Fréchamp. Right. Uh, probably you will visit it. That's the, the smaller one, the right? Smaller, yeah. Yes. On the mountain. And, uh, and meanwhile, uh, here our neighbors were trying to sell for, uh, long years, but, uh, it, the price was really so high. <laughs> <laughs> impossible to approach. So we were trying to uh, negotiate a small bid. There is the, all this part was uh, not explored at all. We we're saying, ah, we just need one more room, a small office, you know, then we can carry on and uh, take care of your home. And, but we couldn't uh, match uh, on this uh, level. Was, we tried to, to make an offer, was rejected. Okay, and then we went for, for the other project, for the Cinde Clichon. And then uh, two weeks after, the neighbors came and said, uh, well, we actually uh, made, our, <laughs> made up our minds and uh, we're ready to accept your proposal. Amazing. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> the like the other one. <laughs> <laughs> On the same day, so we were like, mm -hmm. that's a life change. <laughs> yeah. So, it, was, so it, was, it suddenly turned into a much bigger project than you'd anticipated. So you were going to do okay. the other little one and now this one as well. Yes. How, how much bigger is this one than the I haven't seen the other one yet. Uh, the right. other one is around 350 square meters and this one is uh, about 1,200. Wow. Okay. So we... Um, and uh, at the same time, the COVID ahead. And then COVID arrived. <laughs> oh. So now you're... So, so we were locked in here. Right. Locked in Provence. <laughs> it was a very bad period. <laughs> There's worse places. <laughs> it was a great yeah. time. <laughs> so we we managed to, to have uh, all our teams working. Uh, um, it was allowed for uh, architects to, to carry on and uh, everything connected to, to construction and uh, building. And it was amazing. It was, uh, it, uh, it was difficult to get... Um, to get supplies, to, uh, to have deliveries, um, but in the meantime, uh, we were we were very happy to to do this off. So, so did you take? Were you doing other design projects at the same time as this with with other clients, or did you put everything on hold and then just focus on this one project? Or how did you how did you balance the time? Or did you treat them? Well, at, at the beginning, we yeah, we were working in Geneva and here because of some uh, project art of the in Geneva, and here we met uh, many people and then we do some project for different uh, different client from the center. Yeah, in the beginning we were traveling. Uh, uh, we had a very large project in Saint Tropez, touring back here and then back to Geneva. Three days here, four days in Geneva. And then uh, the other way around, it was uh, pretty uh, intense. When the and then when COVID arrived, we were wow, how will, how are we doing all this? <laughs> <laughs> you just got to relax a little bit during COVID and kind of break it. It's really, but less, uh, yeah, less uh, kilometers to uh, to run. So w when you kind of purchased this property and and the other one, um, 
did you have, was it intentional that it was going to be a business or like a, a boutique type of event space or did you see it as being a home or what was the, the business vision for it? Was it that? <laughs> Well, at first, there was not really a, a business vision, rentals or creating a collection of homes. It was, uh, as we said, it oh, was uh, a pleasure, to, a pleasure to, to renovate, build, and uh, and then uh, probably resell. Mm -hmm. And when we uh, arrived at the situation of having the Chevron and uh, Bastille de Frechon, then uh, we thought, okay, this one, it's too big for us. We're right. going to move uh, here. What are we going to, how are we going to, to explore it? And then uh, we thought, okay, maybe uh, uh, the best way is to imagine it as if it was our home and then uh, create a space where people uh, will be able to, to share very good moments. And with the experience of, uh, of high-end projects in, uh, in Switzerland, we thought that uh, we've learned how people uh, at this level would love to uh, to be welcomed or what they're mm. expecting in their uh, everyday life. And um, and we uh, applied it uh, here in the, in the renovation. And this is how it, uh, it began. In the beginning, we, we didn't know if, uh, how people will uh, uh, look at it, if it will be well accepted, if it, how, how the team will be created. It was um, quite something new for us. What, what kind of state was that house in when you, when you bought it? With mirror on the, on the city, uh, <laughs> pink walls, uh, uh, it was very special. Wow. Yes, it was, it uh, belonged to a um, uh, family from Paris where the uh, the mother and the father were very active. So they were uh, welcoming a lot of uh, uh, guests and uh, uh, organizing concerts and... Um, sure, it was well used. Was, yes. But in the meantime, they they wanted to have a, a small Chateau et Provence. So it mm -hmm. was uh, very much the traditional, um, a traditional style with their uh, fabrics and hidden, uh, the, the ceilings were, were hidden, the heights were lowered. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was also a, a mixture of many, many styles with, uh, um, we can still see it in the, in the house. And then the, their two sons never managed to touch anything. They were so, uh, impressed by, by their parents, uh, that they were saying us, yeah, but if our mother came back, what would, uh, he have said or a thing. So the station, because Kate can <laughs> in the era of the, of the parents, which was already outdated. And yes, there were um, mirrors all over, or a pink um, uh, marble, and, and then yellow tiles, and then uh, <laughs> every room was a <laughs> different kind of uh, headache. And, and so when you were doing the renovations, did you... Did you live in one of the two properties whilst it was happening, or did you rent and stay nearby, or go see more? We were uh, uh, just um, yeah. living next door, yes. Right, and 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 was this always the next door space that there? That's now your studio. That was a garret. Oh, right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, there was a ramp. It was uh, all dark. Um, one part was. Uh, some kind of storage. Actually, oh, the last room, room number eight, the balcony didn't exist. All this part was uh, covered with the aluminium um, facade from the 70s. Wow. The, uh, it, it, was, it, it was really, really bad. So a lot of work. Kind of. Oh, yeah. In the office is a complete uh, transformation, yes. So with these projects, when you're doing them yourself, obviously, you know, the, the biggest danger is Money, it's that one. It's, it's the it's the thing that stops so many architects and designers actually doing their own projects, is because you know that it can be quickly become prohibitively expensive. Um, how were you guys kind of working with the budget, or were you just like, you know what, we're we're going to do everything that we want to do, or you knew how to kind of keep costs down but keep the quality, you know, like 
as high as it is. How did you kind of manage that? At the beginning in, in, in Switzerland, uh, I do a lot of uh, promotion, mm-hmm. and uh, we yeah, we sold uh, some uh, houses in uh, in Geneva. English. I know the one you were there, but the property I have the ability to to gain that and uh, negotiate with some men to for the for some credit. Yes, we negotiated a lot with the with the suppliers. Mm-hmm. Furniture or materials, uh, um, and just trying us to to make um, get out the maximum. Yeah, and we were present all the time. So uh, keeping your eyes on the, the, the rhythm of uh, of the construction site was was kept uh, steady. Mm-hmm. We had also our teams. We hired uh, our workers for uh, for the masonry painting and. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was, uh, um, yeah, that allowed us to keep uh, the budget. Uh, Did you um, set this, the ownership up of this property in a separate business? Yeah. And then that business and kind of hired the architecture. And yeah. Here. So you kind of found like a, a contract between the two yes. businesses and, and then paid it. Yes. And so you've done property before, before these two projects. Yeah. You, you've kind of built and developed your own properties before. Alan did. Alan, Alan has. And, and what sorts of things were you doing prior? At the beginning, we buy some land and uh, we built some uh, some houses. Mm-hmm. But uh, now it's a uh, real adventure because uh, in Geneva, all the concepts are where I'm really modern. Mm-hmm. I take them. Now it's uh, absolutely different. And uh, we, we work on maybe the stone. Right. Different materials. And, but... Uh, all the time we were working on the luxury house. Is it? But um, we work a lot for the for some private clinic in Chisalan. Uh, in mm-hmm. And we modified the, the clinic in the hotel that you can see. Right. It's a, we have a very nice restaurant and you feel comfortable when you go to the hospital. Or to go to the clinic. Yeah. And uh, one more time, it was on the high level of uh, the Consumption. So, so the the architecture business in in Geneva was was kind of was doing very well, and and it allowed you to be able to kind of go into doing your own private developments, and then you sold a load of those, which kind of helped the funding. During this one, exactly. Ah, I see. I think so. It's, so long long term yeah. plan. And uh, on the same time, we didn't know what to do during a few a few days. And we decided to uh, to design a, a boat, a sailing boat, <laughs> and we build it in Turkey. And uh, same, when we do a lot of charter, and uh, like here yeah, we adapt the, the the profile of the charter for the the boats from the resident portion of our house. <laughs> same service, same quality of service. Oh wow! Okay, oh, lazy, very interesting. So. When you uh, kind of completed this project, I mean, one of the things that's, you know, it's so photographic, you know, there's like every little corner you can take a picture of. Mm-hmm. How did you go about promoting and marketing it and, and having it published? That's fair. I should have thought that. Um, I first went uh, looking for a nice graphic design agency uh, because I thought that our presentation should uh, should be uh, to the same uh, level, and then uh, when we started working with uh, well, with, the, with this company from uh, from Paris, Cake Design, the guys told me, "Okay, so who would be your PR manager?" And I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> And then I said, move mm, that. <laughs> Maybe not too fast. <laughs> so I was just, how shocked, how come? And then they, they advised us that we would, uh, if we want to really uh, uh, and, um, uh, out on the market and, uh, and position as, as a high level product, we would need a uh, good agency. Right. So we, uh, uh, we found one that, uh, it is still following us, or leading us, 
Um, and yeah, the mixture of uh, a very good ph photographer, uh, a good uh, graphic uh, design, and uh, a good PR helps you to mm. bring your good product. <laughs> yes, to the market on the right market. Yeah. So, because because that, that one of the, the other things is that the the imagery of the of, of the building, you know, it's kind of everywhere. It's you know, it's it's, it's you know, the kind of story I told at the beginning. What it illustrates that it's it it's very easy to find. It's one of these kind of Pinterest, mm. you know, yeah. people's people's dream houses that's being pinned everywhere. And I thought, that, yeah, the, the photography of everything and the you know, how many magazines have been featured in is very impressive. It we we received really uh, uh, an impress, impressive uh, color in France. Right. It was uh, for us it was a huge uh, huge surprise. We didn't well, we weren't expecting to be uh, in eighty or uh, or even Vogue. And uh, and now we're focusing on the UK and uh, and US market. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. And have have you found then that since you done and completed this that it's its own business now so you're kind of you know it's an event space and it's, you hire it out for that has it also driven new work to the practice the like interior is not yeah it it was uh people started calling to to have a project done by us because they have seen uh uh master Chapin. Then a uh, uh, few people asked to buy uh, already. Oh, they people were trying to buy it. Not, uh, yeah, we had also <laughs> a moment. <laughs> For now we are done with it. <laughs> and, uh, was it, you were, did, you, did you think about it or? No, I didn't do work. Uh, and there was, we had a client that, a repetitive client that uh, was uh, willing to buy it for his, uh, uh, as a, um, uh, gift for his 60th uh, uh, birthday and we went through a few months so it was very, very stressful <laughs> because uh, the, it was difficult to say no it's uh, impossible and thanks god his wife decided <laughs> that um, she didn't consult her mm -hmm. so uh, it was not her choice and uh, was it was it difficult um, this uh, situation because you you didn't want to sell it or you did want to sell it or you didn't want to say no to a client who you've been working with. Oh, yeah, actually, you didn't say no to their sale. Actually, <laughs> at that, that time, yeah, there there are many things. The, or, the, or the large, the attachment to the house. Uh, sure, we are very generally attached to uh, about uh, the this property. But we are architect. Our job is, <laughs> yeah. Our job is to uh, to create some new um, new house, wall property. Yes. And uh, we were very confused. Yeah, we were very. And the boy is, is a nice guy, and uh, it was uh, like you said that uh, difficult to say uh, to say no, and the price was shown. There is guess price was <laughs> impossible to refuse. But then finally, it's um, it's our face, our um, main uh, main point or main uh, main attraction. So we, we should we we understood that we have to keep it. Maybe we can sell other houses around the small mm. the smaller ones. We can always add and uh, and there will be more um, uh, difficult to to uh, only add with the to promote, to promote, no, not to promote. To, uh, um, they're less, uh, less significant. Let's say this one sure. is really, uh, really unique and really uh, remarkable. And as you say, it's now, now it, it has uh, arrived to a state where it's uh, recognizable. It has uh, um, some background already. Plus, uh, average people mm -hmm. start to to know it. Oh, yeah, it's it's got it's it's kind of iconic mm -hmm. in in the, in the region. And it's also very interesting because so many times when architects design like an exemplary building like this, and you're doing it for somebody else, then the client doesn't allow you to take photographs mm -hmm. of it, or they don't allow you to publish it, yes. and you've got to keep it. And that's really yes. like for so many architects very very difficult. Very and then of course here you can 
in July, the contract you said that we have the right to, to take some pictures at the end of the conception. <laughs> and if, yes, and even though. <laughs> because it's true. Right? Yes. And you said you've experienced that before, then clients have said no, and, and so on. And so now you always put a, you put a clause in the contract. Now we have it as a clause in the contract, but even though it exists as a clause in the contract, it remains a very sensible uh, moment. In When we arrive to the end of, of the project and when uh, clients get possession, it's like giving a baby. So once they become uh, parents... <laughs> exactly. You can no, no, show it. Well, <laughs> yeah, and I can understand. I've, I've spoken to many architects where... That's been a real difficult point with their, you know, particularly in the ultra, you know, working with ultra high net worth individuals in the luxury market, mm. the being able to take photographs of their house, very difficult. I was speaking to um, one of our own clients, actually, an architect, and um, one of the things that he does with his clients is he takes a small percentage of every invoice that comes in and puts it into an escrow account. Mm -hmm. and he's got a clause and it's called the the completion bonus and so when the project is finished this bank account has accrued a significant amount of money mm -hmm. and at the end he'll ask the client can i take photographs of the project and if the client says no you've got to get an allow then he'll say well i've got this this money that i collected that was going to go back to you and if you don't <laughs> let me take photographs then you won't get this money back and they're like uh, <laughs> come, okay. come, bring, come bring it in. That, yeah, that's a good uh, it's yeah it's, it's a kind of um, an interesting way of kind of mm -hmm. dealing with that but it's very it's very difficult to uh, mm -hmm. you know it is even for uh in the office even for colleagues and for uh, for uh, uh new members coming in if you if you want to to show someone yeah. well, you know, details and like to see what yes. you're doing also, but that's, they don't like the, to let yeah. to let other people in. Also, yeah, yeah when they arrive, they say, and let's see what you have done. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. that. So that must be really great then, because you can always invite yeah. clients here and you can let them stay, and it's, and we kind of just to, you know get the whole experience of it. It's actually feel the atmosphere, understand what they like, what they don't like, uh, uh, make them understand our. Uh, Philosophy and vision of uh, of a project in uh, South of France. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's very helpful. <laughs> so after this this one, have you got your eyes set on some other other properties that you're looking to do the same with, or was this enough? No, no we are, uh, actually we are top models. But we have four projects running uh, yes, right now. Two of them are completed for this summer. And tomorrow, uh, we're aiming to finish uh, for the end of the year, Christmas. Uh, one of them is, uh, will be the small sister of uh, my reception. Uh, again, seven bedrooms and a wow. uh, um, massive plane tree, 300-year-old uh, plane tree in front of the, of the house. Then uh, the second one is... Uh, smaller one the six bedrooms uh, but in the heart of the village very different mm -hmm. um, we tried to break the codes and uh, and went completely traditional mm -hmm. but still with the with the comfort of uh, for contemporary living and um, applying uh, a lot of uh, reclaimed materials concentrating on uh, local uh, uh, craftsmanship, uh, um, maybe eighty percent of the uh, uh, of the furniture and the materials we have uh, in are uh, French. Well, that's uh, and wow. Just uh, uh, more in the line of uh, regenerative uh, uh, building and tourism. Is it? And then, uh, and then we have to. Uh, then we have another one uh, that is uh, the third one is uh, um, in the rocks of uh, Bot Provence. So the, yeah, the um, the rock is actually in the living room. So we won't have vaults, but we'll have a huge <laughs> rock, and uh, and the swimming pool is also attached uh, to uh, to the rocks. 
Uh, and then the fourth one is lost in nature, completely remote, uh, where you don't have, uh, you don't see anyone, you don't have, uh, you have one neighbor mm -hmm. <laughs> in case. Um, but we always try to find something unique. Yeah. It can be a, a small village house, but still um, then the atmosphere inside uh, have to, to procure you some, uh, uh, some pleasure and, and, and some well-being. Yeah, of course, we're looking for, if possible, uh, the the dream of the architect, mm -hmm. the, an old building, and have to bring it back to, to bring it back to life. Um, we decided to not uh, build new mm -hmm. here uh, because there are enough uh, uh, properties that are waiting to uh, to be. Uh, Waken up. <laughs> oh. So, uh, with with these these new projects, are they all being kind of privately, you know, financed by yourself, and then you, you're using institute like you know, you're, you're borrowing and linking mortgages, or are you working with other developers or other clients even to for the investment? No, for our project, the uh, <clears throat> if I finance the the project one, they have uh, said so. We just have uh, one friend uh, who is partner on for one uh, oh, house. Okay. But we don't need uh, the piano. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's great. That's, a, that's like a, such a freedom for, for you guys to be able to. It's boring. Yeah, because this is the other thing, because if, if you go down the development route and you're bringing other people in, mm. then it's going to be harder to create. Mm. All the, the details and do it exactly the way you and you want to go through it. Even sometimes between the hours, <laughs> okay. I, I often think, no, I have the most difficult client. <laughs> <laughs> You're keeping each other in check. It's sort of like all of that. Yeah, all of the second. Yeah. So, so with the the new projects, do you have um, like a business in mind for them, or are you going to just you just kind of develop them with the design intent? as the main focus and then figure out what they're going to be or how you're going to hold on to them? Well, we always, uh, we, we uh, figured out that we need to to now uh, concentrate everything into a collection. This is how we came to Domaine de Charon. Right. Uh, so now we are positioning everything as a, I don't know, a private collection. And, uh, and then we always say, if someone falls in love, <laughs> then I uh, <laughs> see. <laughs> love it i love it wow but it is <clears throat> the the project must be um completed complete. to the to the smallest detail if it uh and and that's we start exploring it uh, uh, through the rentals and the events and right and then one day who knows yeah or it, it already happened uh, two times so the, the, I guess the question would be, why why do work for anybody else? Oh, uh, now we are building a, a new boat for a uh, Brazilian client. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's an amazing experience, <laughs> and, and the clients are also uh, incredible. And it's uh, it's nice to exchange and to have this uh, this challenge. In uh, very different change. Yeah. And, uh, it's a sailing boat, uh, 48 meters, yeah. and with uh, electric uh, propulsion. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's a big challenge. And otherwise, uh, can we still continue doing projects for for clients, but we don't follow anymore the, uh, the execution. Right, okay. Just architectural supervision uh, on site, but um, the most of our time uh, for construction follow-up is dedicated right. to our project. And how do you source the properties? Because again, that's the other difficult thing is actually, I'm, I'm sure in this area as well, there's and, uh, so true. much competition for, for yes. stuff like this. And it's very difficult to, to find something uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. The rules are getting uh, are hard to spawn there. Uh, the areas because it's a very particular area. Right. And uh, actually, very difficult to 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 build a big house. The regulation are crazy. Right. Maximum three hundred fifty square meters. When some area it's one hundred fifty. 
Right. And uh, with the 130 square tools, you cannot do any architecture. Right. It's, it's a very small right. to, to give some, uh, something. Yeah. So that that as well, I guess, is is quite a good niche for you guys then, because mm-hmm. you know, and this is this is part of the, the the good thing about architects being developers is that you can take very difficult buildings or very difficult sites and work magic with them and kind of be able to release them. Whereas I'd imagine a lot of other developers, it would just be prohibitively expensive to take these properties and try and do something with it. It happened, yeah, a few times already. That was the case. We, we transformed uh, some uh, properties that uh, owners were completely desperate and uh, they were saying, oh, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> And we love the challenge of uh, it's impossible, <laughs> but it's getting diffi- more and more difficult. Right. Every, from uh, from one side, it's good that uh, um, people try to calm down and to make uh, things uh, in a more uh, sensible way, but it's a weird thing. It's really getting uh, uh, awkward. Mm-hmm. Why would you? Uh, ask people to build only 150 square meters or 200 square meters in area where you know that uh, you come together with family and friends so uh, it will never be uh, enough to, to welcome you yeah your, <laughs> everyone every member of your of your family and then people who are uh, who are in need of um, this kind of uh, surfaces they don't have uh, the financial uh, uh, possibility to buy in this particular area. So it's um, the rules are all, always very general, mm-hmm. and uh, they don't really apply. Yeah, uh, they need to be yeah, kind of in, interpreted and understood. A um, slightly different tangent of, of questions. Obviously, you guys are your mounts, correct? Yeah, yeah and and working together. So, and this is, I find really interesting actually, because I was, I did a little survey of some of our own clients and our listeners on the podcast. And it's about, we was, we were seeing between 13 to 20% of architecture design practices, are husband and wife teams really? in, in a certain bracket of small practices. Okay. So we're talking between, you know, five to 35 people, sorts mm-hmm. of practices that's often led by um, uh, husband and wife team. So, how? What are what are some of the challenges of running a business together, and what are some of the the, the benefits? How do you how do you how do you not go crazy? How do you keep it? You say first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think uh, both we 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 like what we uh, what we do, and uh, we don't think about uh, weekend or the off. It's our life to to, to be in, to think, to travel, and to see some uh, some land, some uh, some construction, some uh, materials, some uh, and uh, it, everything informs uh, the the project. And yeah. we are still open to 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 share to you together. And uh, sure, sometimes we are not agree. But it's it's probably more difficult for the others around us. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. <laughs> because we're all the time, uh, as Alan says, we're all the time exchanging and uh, uh, sometimes thinking uh, out of the blue uh, on, right. on the same point on uh, on a project or a detail of a project, and and people around us are not really in the same uh, in the same. Um, <laughs> Mood <laughs> or, uh, or, the, or passion. So f- for us, working every day, it's, uh, it has never been a, an overwhelming or a, or a burden. Or and we can work everywhere. If it, yes. Actually, with the uh, in planet, we we can do a project, and we are in the other part of the world and uh, send the, the deal drawing. To the office, and we do have more or less the same dynamic of uh, of living and, uh, and 
and working. So it's uh, it's really a, a problem. Uh, um, problem is uh, the color of the shutters. <laughs> <laughs> it lasts about 15 minutes, then we could change. <laughs> but no, no, not. Oh, no, it's a good life. Mm -hmm. And I could say, brilliant. I have the perfect place for us to conclude the, the conversation. Thank you so much for the speaking of I me. Mean, really, really inspiring yeah. what you guys are doing. And, and you know, just absolutely beautiful. Thank you. It's a real privilege. And that's a wrap. Hey, Enix Sears here. And I, I have a request since you are a listener here of the Business of Architecture podcast. Ryan and I, we love putting this podcast together. We love sharing information as much as we can glean from all the other industries that we're a part of to bring it back to empower you as an architect and a designer. And one thing that helps us in our mission is the growth of this podcast, simply because it helps other architects stand for more of their value, spreads the business information that we're sharing to empower architects together. So architects, designers, engineers can really step into their greatness, whatever that looks like for each individual. And so here, my, my simple ask is for you to join us and be part of our community by doing the following, heading over to iTunes and leaving a review of the podcast. And as an expression of our sincere thanks, we would like to give you a free CEU course that can get you one professional development unit, but more importantly, will give you a very solid and firm foundation on your journey to becoming a profitable and thriving architect. So here's the process for that. After you leave us a review, send an email to support at businessofarchitecture.com. Let us know the username that you use to leave the review, and we will send you that free training. On the training, you'll discover what 99% of architecture firm owners wished they would have known 20 years ago. And the other 1%, well, they just didn't even know that they didn't know. Head over to iTunes and leave us a review now. And now a word from today's sponsor. A while ago, I began to hear reports of a company that was helping some of our clients build remote teams. We looked into it more closely and discovered the company World Teams that was helping small architectural practitioners build remote teams that were both capable and qualified. I was intrigued by another business that's addressing one of the critical pain points for small architectural practices, which is the ability to grow and shrink a team effectively, to be able to handle higher workflow without having to staff up significantly, and also being very sensitive about labor costs. World Teams is built to address these issues. World Teams is a small but mighty company that helps architectural practices build high-performing remote teams quickly and efficiently saving you the headache of sorting resumes and interviewing underqualified candidates. World Teams operates in your time zone and prioritizes near native English speakers, ensuring clear and efficient communication with your remote team members. They have flexible contracts so you can adjust your team size as your needs evolve. Additionally, you're connected directly with your skilled professionals, which fosters trust and collaboration. And World Teams helps you reduce your operating costs without compromising the quality that is so important to a practice. To download a free guide for building a remote team for a small architectural practice, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash world teams. That's one word, businessofarchitecture.com forward slash world teams. As a reminder, sponsorship is not an endorsement and you must do your own due diligence before entering into any business relationship. Go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash world teams. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.